Okay, in this video we're taking a look at the Racer Star Tai Chi stack. I guess uh, I'm not exactly sure if that's the way you say it, but that's what it sounds like to me. Tai Chi, 40 amp, 400 ESC, BL Hall 32, so it's a 32 bit ESC. So it should be able to do RPM filter, and it's an F4. And you got a very unusual design here. They're made of circles, not squares, but obviously it looks like they amount to a 20 by 20 pattern. Let's go ahead and pull these out. Okay, so we got your EC, you got your flight controller. We'll look at that here in a second. We've got a bunch of stuff inside here. Wiring loom that goes from the flight controller to the EC. Nothing special about that. We got two different kinds of capacitors here, two different sizes, and we got an XT30, and we have an XT60, and they will need to be soldered up along with some pretty thick wire and. Uh, you got your manual here. So it looks like they are giving you two different options for uh, different kinds of builds. Either like a larger build with an XD60 connector, and then this gauge of wire here is 14 gauge wire. And imagine that you'll use the bigger EC for this. is a low EC capacitor, 1000 microfarad, 35 volts. Or you could go for a smaller build with the XT30 and this is 18 yeah, 18 gauge wires, pretty typical size for an XT30 and then uh, the low E here, 220 microfarad, 35 volts so thinking that um, it's going to be for two different kinds of builds okay so here's a quick look at the manual uh, nothing too special about it, it just basically uh, shows specs and yeah, I see 40 amps for the EC, burst in 45 amps for 10 seconds, 2 to 6S. And this shows the wiring diagram for the flight controller here. Okay, so we'll take a look at the components. So here we got a the ESC here. So 20 by 20 mounting pattern. They look like M2 holes, if I'm not mistaken. They definitely look like M2 holes. So if you're looking for M3 holes, uh, this ain't going to be for you. Pretty interesting heatsink here. This is a really, I mean, this is a really big, heavy heatsink. This thing, this thing, this thing feels pretty hefty. It looks like you got all your microcontrollers in this side. So the heatsink is on the right side here, where all the FETs are. So, uh, not really feeling like breaking this and taking the heatsink off. I probably know what the FETs look like. Nothing too special there. We got your battery connection here, plus minus. So you're gonna put your battery wire and your capacitor. And because it's a circle shape, the wires are going to be very symmetrical. They're going to come out of the corners. So if you have an X uh, style frame, then the wires are going to come out um, basically on the corners and there's no like extra wire uh, that's going to be kind of looping around and stuff. So that's kind of nice. You have a connector here. That's what this guy's for. It goes to your flight controller. And it's labeled here, but also solder pads are available if you want to use solder pad. So you got your typical connections here, voltage, ground, motor connections, signal wires, current sensor, and ESC telemetry. And here's a look at the flight controller. It's an F4 flight controller. And because of this sort of strange shape and design, let's see, I guess it would go something like this. This is the back. And which way is the back on? Is there an arrow on this? Yeah, so that's the front arrow is that way. And usually your battery connection goes out the back, so the flight controller will line up with the EC like this. And that's where, uh, so it looks like it's correct, so you have your wiring loom on this side, on the same side. But because of the circle, the USB port is not uh, coming out at a, at a right angle to the board. It's kind of off at a, a little bit off, maybe about 5 degrees, so it's a bit strange. Okay, so other than the sort of unusual shape of the flight controller, it's a typical F4 flight controller. We've got your F4 chip on the bottom here, uh, chip for black box data, uh, MP6000 gyro, beta flight OSD, uh, 5 volt regulator, and you can see here all of the connections are silk screened on top, but they're not on the bottom, so it's probably going to be easier to connect up all your wires up on top. That's typically what most people will do. So you have your battery ground there. You have S5, 5 volts, that's probably like a motor signal 5. And you have your UARTs here, TX3, RX3, I believe there's three UARTs on this board. 
So over here on the side, you have your connections for your VTX and your camera and receiver. You have uh, connections for your, looks like RC there, an RX1. So I believe one of these is going to be inverted and the other one is not going to be inverted. Let me just double check that. So it's documented here in the paper. So we have um, RC, as I thought, is S bus. That's going to be for your inverted signals. And then RX1, is, it says here for iBus, that's going to be basically for your uninverted signals like uh, uh, FlySky, iBus, and also Spectrum here as well. And you also have a 3.3 volt pad if you're using Spectrum. So that's good. Okay, so let's see what all this stuff weighs. The Ford on AC is 14.8 grams, pretty hefty. Flight controller by itself, about four and a half grams. And throw on all the parts together. Uh, flight controller, AC, 19.3, wiring loom, uh, 20.1. And if, we, if we're going for an XT30 setup, the smaller capacitor is gonna be 23.7. And if you're going for the bigger one, And XT60 setup is at coming out at 32.2 grams. Anyway, it's going to do it for this video. What do you guys think of this sort of unusual design with the circle shape? You think that'll uh, fit more builds, perhaps? Maybe some smaller builds uh, that instead of a 30 by 30, you can go with this 20 by 20. Uh, obviously, this, you can do either a 3 inch up to a 5 inch build on this guy. So uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, this circle shape might be better for certain types of frames. Curious to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments below and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.